September 22nd, St. Thomas of Villanova, Bishop of Valencia. St. Thomas, the glory of the Spanish Church in the 16th century, was born in the Diocese of Toledo in the year 1488. His mother was a Christian of extraordinary tenderness for the poor. God worked a miracle for her one day when her servants had given away absolutely all the flour in their storeroom. When another beggar came to the door, she told them to go back once more and look again, and they found the storeroom filled with flour. Her little son followed his mother's example, and one day gave away to six poor persons in succession the six young chicks which had just been following the hen around the yard. When his mother asked where they were, he said, You didn't leave any bread in the house, Mama, so I gave them the chicks. I would have given them the hen if another beggar had come. At the age of fifteen years he began his studies, and succeeded so well he was judged fit to teach philosophy and theology in a college of Alcala. When his father died, he returned to Villanova to dispose of his patrimony. He made his house into a hospital, keeping only what was needed for his mother, and gave the rest to the poor. At the age of twenty-eight, he entered the Order of the Hermits of St. Augustine, and became professed in the year 1517. He was then ordained a priest three years later, and he continued his teaching of theology, but also began to preach so remarkably well that he was compared with St. Paul and the prophet Elias. The city was reformed, and after the Emperor Charles V heard him once, he returned and often mingled with the crowd to listen, finally making St. Thomas his official preacher. His sanctity continued to increase, and he was nominated Archbishop of Valencia in the year 1544. He had refused a similar offer sixteen years earlier, but this time was obliged to accept. After a long drought, rain fell on the day he assumed his new office. He arrived as a pilgrim accompanied by one fellow monk and was not recognized in the convent of his order when the two travelers came asking for shelter during the rain. He was obliged to reveal his identity when the prior, who wondered where the awaited archbishop might be, asked him if perchance it was he. The new archbishop was so poor that he was given money for furnishings, but he took it to the hospital for the indigent. On being led to his throne in church, he pushed the silken cushions aside and with tears kissed the ground. His first visit was to the prison. Two-thirds of his episcopal revenues were annually spent in alms. He daily fed 500 needy persons, made himself responsible for the bringing up of the city's orphans, and sheltered, neglected foundlings with a mother's care. During his eleven-year episcopate, not one poor maiden was married without an alms from the archbishop. Spurred by his example, the rich and the selfish became liberal and generous. And when, on the Nativity of Our Lady in the year 1555, after a one-week illness, St. Thomas was about to breathe his last, he gave his bed to a poor man and asked to be placed on the floor. It has been said that at his death he was probably the only poor man in his sea.